Well, hello again, everyone. It is your Black Knight. Coming to you from my 50-car garage as we finish off, for this character, the Garage Tour series. We're going to have to go through it all with Rusty Jack again at some point. We'll see how many parking spots I've got there. Right now, the count stands at three, three free spots. I, I think it's going to stay that way for the most part. I, don't think, I think this is a full garage, but we're, we're going to give a little bit of a tour here. And starting with the Mustang here, the uh, the Dominator GTT. Now this is really the closest I've got to my dad's old 1969 Mach 1, which we had for a very long time. Eventually we ended up having to sell it off to a restorer who could do good things with it. But this is the car I used to go to grade school in. It's you know the, it was a it was a gold Mach 1 white interior just like that, same kind of door panels. Um, had the hood scoop, not a big hood scoop, like a, not a hood scoop point like that, but it was close. Did have the hood pins. Uh, headlights are spot on. Wheels are as close as I can get. It doesn't have the Mach 1 stripes, not like his did. But 351, four barrel, you know, Windsor. It was a, it was a nice dealio. It was a good car. And you can see this layout represented in this regular Dominator. And the Dominator GT GTX, you know, in this uh, Tampa. Tampa. The Tampa was also kind of a Mustang, somewhere between a Mustang and a Dart, I want to say. That was back before they were they're, they're trying to do like homages to cars as opposed to cars that looked some way specifically. And it's even represented here on my ASP. It is for this character. It is the Mustang's look. Gold and black Mach 1, that's what we do here. Whatever we're dealing with, Dominators. But as you'll soon find out, all cars here are somewhat related to real cars from my life. You know, take the Stallion, for example. Uh, it's it's painted up and, and done up kind of to resemble as close as you can my, my Uncle Bill's Chevelle. Uncle Bill's my mom's cousin's husband. He used to have a Chevelle just like this. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's one again, another childhood memory kind of thing. I remember the Chevelle being a thing, and just like, you know, Dad's mud, Dad had the Mach 1, he had the Chevelle. They, you know, the Uncle Bill is a hilarious guy. He still is. Great sense of humor. Fun person to be around. So we have an homage to his Chevelle in here. This Impaler, this is uh, an homage to my grandfather's Impala. He used to have an Impala just this color, it's the way I remember it. I remember it had some front end damage after a while, and we actually used the bent, uh, the bent front grill to pull out trees. It even bent up. The, the grill was still that strong. It was a strong old car. It was, it was good. This is I, I. I think he got rid of this when I was really young, but I still remember it. I still remember it quite. You know, it's for it's been forty years, but I mean, I still remember it. So that's here. One car I don't remember. I, I've only heard of it told through song and story is uh, my mom's GTO. She had a, uh, a GTO with a 389 with three deuces in it. I mean, there was a story that somewhere along the line when my one of my great uncles, I believe, it was either my great grandfather or my great, or his brother, my great uncle, I had to go to the hospital. Um, mom beat the ambulance with the, with my grandmother and aunt in tow. So, it was like it was like a great grandfather kind of thing. It was like you know beyond you know, it was like her mother's father or uncle, something like that. But there, she beat the ambulance there because that thing moved. And uh, eventually she sold that off. You know when at the time you know, they they just got the Mach One, so they sold off the goat. I think they sold it to an uncle, and then something untoward happened to it. So it's no longer with the world. But you'll have this. So that's as close, again, as close to a goat as I could get in the game at the time. What is this? Yeah, it's a Buccaneer, which is a mix of a bunch of things. But this had some goatly look to it, so that's that's what I've, I've built here. Now, the Tahoma Coupe, this one has been, again, it's a rough approximation. But, you know, the, one of the cars I used to drive as a kid was a 78 Grand Prix. And drove this for a lot of years. Uh, the wheels are pretty lock on a match. The color is right. The bumpers are right. The interior is right. That's the Grand Prix, as far as I can tell. I mean, it, it really is more of a Monte Carlo, 
but again similar body styles this is as close as you can get in GTA so that's what we're doing now this this was my high school car it was and I've, I've actually got the original I, I still have this plate but that was the plate on the car itself I had a uh, an 81 Regal now it wasn't a you know a GNX or anything like that or any special it was just a regular 3.8 but I had that car for well, let's see, through probably, I think, my second or third year of college for the engine blue and spectacular NASCAR style. And that ended up going to a, a fire company to be uh, used as a training tool for the Jaws of Life. But, I mean, this car, you know, you know, a good... I probably drove it for a good four years, five years, something like that, and it, it really owed me nothing. The interior matches the way it was in, in real life. Along with, uh, it didn't, the, the whole top wasn't blue. It just had, like, the back part was blue. And this didn't have a sunroof or anything, or, or T-tops. It just was white. But it's a, that's as close as I can get it. And very fond of that car. It's, it's got, I've got a lot of good memories from it. It's, so we have the Buick. And I, I was driving the Buick and, and the Grand Prix concurrent for a while. And then the Grand Prix kind of took over somewhat from this. We also had an LTD, which uh, I drove for a bit. And he... 586 LTD. Didn't realize till years later. That's a Fox body. I was driving around a Mustang and I didn't realize it. So it was... What am I getting out of one of those? They've all been turned into drag cars though, you know? That was a nice car too. Not represented here. We got it for like 400 bucks. Drove it for like a decade. It was really great. All right, now, these these are relevant to me. These are more personal cars. Stratum here, and to the same extent, the, the Reinhardt. If you look at both of these, somewhere in between the two of them, you've got my uh, my Subaru Outback. Uh, right now, my current main car that I drive is a Subaru Outback. And uh, love that car. It's got good power, four-wheel drive, the whole nine yards. It's currently, as I'm... Speaking this, it's in the shop getting a new uh, main electric fan put in. Because you, you really kind of need that. But between the two of them, I mean, they're, neither one of them is a perfect representation, of course. But between the two of them, you get the vibe. They're both keepers. This one, the, uh, the Vapid minivan. Very, very reminiscent of the 2001 Windstar that my wife drives. I think I've regaled you in other times of the circle of Windstars. I had a I had a 96 Windstar, which is represented by this car, and the flames will become obvious in a moment. The uh, It didn't burn, but... So I had a 96 Windstar. It was blue, very similar to this blue. Immaculate. It was older, but I mean, I got it for like $5,000 back, oh, this, back in what, 20... 2004, somewhere along those lines, 2004. Drove it for about a year. In-laws insisted that we had to come down and see their new place down in Florida. Where they had a white Windstar, which is this one. There was a 2001. Yeah, it's like they had, it was a couple years old. We drove the, the 96 down, because this one was the 96. Interesting thing on the 96, that was the first year of the plastic intake manifolds, yes. So we drove it down there. We drove it around a little bit, parked it for a few days which allowed the crack in the intake manifold to allow all of the coolant to fill up the cylinders. Then we went to go home and then basically you know, bent the hell out of everything in the motor because it was hydrolocked. Called the tow truck. Tow truck driver shows up to take it to my, my father-in-law's garage. And if it wasn't Larry the Cable Guy, it was darned close. The guy had the same kind of cut-off plaid vest kind of thing going there. I see what your problem is. You're driving a Ford. And then, you know, on the ride, he proceeds to tell me... Now, you realize, I just want to go home, and now my car is all screwed up. I'm not in a good mood. They tow it to the mechanic. Next day, the mechanic says the engine was completely destroyed. They can't do anything with it. I said, can you get a junkyard motor? No. Can't do that. They're all like this. And there was a systemic problem. And I guess if I had gotten it to a Ford dealer, if you'd, if you'd known the secret, uh, the secret, you know stuff that they had going on. They would put another manifold on, but not once you destroyed the engine. They won't help you then. So, we towed it to the Ford dealership. They said, yeah, we'll fix it for you for $48.80. I'm like, I bought, I paid the whole van for 5000 and 
threw the keys down, stripped it forever. I could parts I could that were loose, like this, like the the, the dash knobs and the. I still have the uh, the floor mats. Sent them the title and got and lost the van. Had to rent a car to go home. Had to buy a new car. A car, new car I bought actually was an older red version of this, which you'll see that in another video someday. But then, like. 10, 12 years later, uh, one of the cars we had, I think it was the Trailblazer, transmission went, we were going to get rid of that. And Maela said, hey, we still have that white van that was down here. Do you want it? Because by this point, it was you know, 15, 16 years old. Only had 80,000 miles on it, but they offered it to us, and we, so me and my dad flew down and drove it home. In a snowstorm in which the, the sprayers froze, and we found out that the wipers were pretty well, you know, dried out. So it's like we couldn't see very much in the blinding snowstorm. Trying to stay as close to the, the semi as we could so the slush would keep splashing us so I could still see. It was really kind of a three-hour agony just getting back from, like, Factoryville up to, to, you know, northeast Pennsylvania and Scranton again. Stopped at the earliest opportunity, which we were almost home. Still put windshield wipers on and then we could see. And we've been driving this for, oh... What now? Six, seven, eight years. I don't even know exactly what year we got it. But it's, it's still here. This is still our main, you know, family truckster kind of go around kind of van. So that's, uh, we still have that. So these two, this is the circle of, of Windstars, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, so that's what that's what they represent. So they're not going anywhere. There's nothing really leaving this garage, I don't think. We'll see if we can be surprised. Now this one is what a frontier. This represents a car that my buddy Richie had for a while, and eventually he gave away because it had a little tiny little bit of rust on it. I gave it to like a niece or something like that. Needed a car. He's being very generous with it, and it's very generous. And so this one represents that car. If you're who's going to have one, let's do it to you know per his old Jeep Cherokee. And so that's that car. Again, these are all kind of personal related kind of cars. Now, I have a few. These two trucks here are two different visions of the 77 step side that my brother-in-law has. One of my brother-in-laws, my, my wife's younger brother. Still has it. It has like a, a I forget, like a, a really warmed up, you know, 350 or 383 or something in it. Some kind of Chevy, but I don't, I don't think he's ever finished it. I mean, this goes back for when he was a kid, so it's kind of like his, his, it's his, it's his long, long, long-term project car. And I just have these here. It's a white pickup. They're white pickups. Visions of what his, his stuff could be. And this is one of the visions of one of the things he had. He did have an actual Monte Carlo that looked very, very similar to this. Like really eerie. Like this is pretty much it. So. We have the Monte Carlo here. This is actually, this whole wing almost is, uh, well, it's all brother-in-law cars here and all the one brother-in-law until we get, you know, until we get to the end. But this is his current car. He has a, a 392 uh, Challenger with those stripes. And that's pretty much it. This is pretty close to what he's driving right now. So... This is all one brother-in-law, but this brother-in-law, the other brother, this is my, my sister's husband. That was his actual license plate. And he actually got out of a ticket once because someone sent him a ticket from some. It was a parking ticket for a part of Philadelphia he'd never been in. And they said, well, it says license plate blank. Well, it, it probably didn't have a plate, but it's actually blank. I made it blank to be funny. Ah, ha, ha, well then. And he got out of the ticket. He's like, well, now I have a, a precedent. But this was uh, based on, a, a, I think, a 2001 or 3 Sonata that he had. I mean, when he finally stopped driving, I mean, the, the, the odometer broke at like 400,000 miles or something like that. Like, he put the 300-something, like, it had to be four or 500,000 miles on this by the time it finally died on the Schuylkill Expressway. There, there's a clip I have where I was driving it back for him when they were moving. And I mean, boy, you'd hit a you'd hit a bridge seam on this thing, and the whole rear end would just dance. 
it was really it was really kind of an exciting car to go back with. But it would run. It, they, the Sonata ran forever. I, I felt like I felt like it had to be immortalized with this intruder. It's an intruder, right? Yeah, an intruder. So blank has been immortalized here too. So many personal cars. There, 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 I have some other opportunities for for brother-in-law cars now because my um, years and years ago, my other my, my the last only brother-in-law not represented did have a Durango, and now they've introduced a Durango. But I have no parking for the most part, so I don't know if I'm getting it or not. It's going to depend on if it turns out to be competitive in racing. But there may yet be another brother-in-law car added to the garages. But let's let's move on down the line here to level three. Going on down to level three. All right, so now you're into the matchbox and toy garage. Stuff based on stuff from my youth and, you know, some more ephemeral kind of stuff here. This one, I think I've, I've described it for this is... It's the um, it's an R88, but it's designed to look as close as they could to the John Player Special of Formula One cars. One of which I have, I think it's a '72 Lotus. I still have. I've actually dug it out. It's it's on a shelf right here above me in the den. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a Ronnie Peterson. Uh, why I say Ronnie Peterson was it Mario Andretti? I think it might be Everson Fittipaldi that year. Now, those are the names on it, but. So this is, you know, part of my childhood kind of thing. Um, this is supposed to be... I remember as a kid, I remember watching the Dukes of Hazard and, you know, thinking, well, gee, I'm a Yankee, though. Like, if I had the General Lee, I'd, I'd have to, you know, it wouldn't, wouldn't make sense. I'm a Yankee. I'm from Pennsylvania. So what about General Grant? And I have seen people actually build cars like this in that kind of blue with a General Grant kind of thing on it or General Pat, like different like northern kind of things. So this was just one of the things I have imagined from my youth. And so we have built it and made it alive here. Ah, uh, this is a simple one just based on a really nice green Camaro matchbox I had as a kid and still have as an adult. And, you know, that's well, you know, I think I would have put the matchbox play on this if it didn't have, you know, 69er in the plate. I mean, that's how can you get rid of that? That's just, you know, I don't know if I've ever even noticed that before. Does it really say that? Yeah, that does. Um, now, if we move around here and onto the Pantera, growing up in my neighborhood, there actually was a black Pantera like this 351 Cleveland in the back. And I just used to drool over this car, I was just parked up the street and Again, never have to ride it in or anything. I don't even know who owned it, but it was just beautiful. And I now I have one digitally, so that's a thing. This car is a little weirder. Okay, you're gonna have to get down with the weird on this one. Yeah, it's another Dukes. How many Dukes do you really need? Well, I remember I was going through some kind of stressful period at work. I had this dream. I had this dream that I was like meeting with my father at an airport. I was traving a lot. I was, and it was like, I was in an airport candy store, and it was like, there's a lot of weird details to it. Um, but, like, and he was telling me that basically, you know, everything was, everything I was doing was the right thing. And it was like one of those, as far as having to travel and do this and that. Now, it's not like my father is dead, mind you. We've had that conversation. Like, we, I get regular support from my dad. But I was just thinking about, my, but for whatever reason, I was driving this car. I was driving a Maroon 69 uh Charger, and I, I don't know where that came from. That's just a weird thing. Uh, it was a nice, reassuring dream that everything was good. But, I mean... I, it was just it was just a strange old thing. Where was, and there was a little bit of a dent on the front, and it was a little bit worn. So that's why I don't have it chromed out. Like, it was like fa all the chrome had fallen off. It was just kind of metal. It was a worn old Charger. I'm not... I'm, I, Honestly, wouldn't mind getting a Charger in general. And you'd think, well, you'd go make another General Lee. But if I found a maroon one that fit the dream, it's, it's literally a dream car. It's, it's very weird. Yeah, it was, it was an odd thing. Again, I was a lot of stress, a lot of things. It was just that was, there wasn't anything too ethereal about that dream. I think it was just how my brain was processing all the flying I had to do at the time. Luckily, I'm, I'm done with all that. 
Like, I hope I'm still done with all that. This is another Matchbox car. I think it has the Matchbox plate. Yep. One of my favorite cars, uh, the Matchbox cars growing up, was a green Javelin just like this. And you've seen this. I, you've seen the build on this. I had pictures of it and everything else like that. Um, I think as a kid I thought it was a Mustang. But anyway, it's a Javelin. And uh, cause I was, I've had this a long time. Still have it. Still up on the shelf. Same with this Mustang. This isn't nearly as close a build as... But it was the right color. I had a, a 71 Mach 1 with huge, you know, huge rear wheels. It was, it was a, again, Matchbox brand. I have them. That's as close as I could come to that. It's the right color, the right stripes. Same deal. Another one of my favorite cars. It was the same era. Was a Lamborghini Countach. And it was like an original style Lamborghini Countach. So it's a little bit even more different than... Like the 25th anniversaries and those like that. It was you can look it up. The original Countach, you know, and I had one. And it had different, not exactly these stripes, but about the same mix of stripes and color. So I decided I'd do my XO that way. So this is this is definitely uh, a keeper. Funny story about this one. I remember being very upset as a kid because this, this one fell in the pool and I thought it was going to rust to nothing, but it did survive even to this day. So we're we're okay. I'm sure there's some oxidation on that because I mean it's. Well, nigh into 40, 50 years old again here because I'm I'm 52 as I'm doing this. So you know it's it's old cars, but still have them. Had this one as a Mercedes, another again another Matchbox car that I used to play with as a kid. This wasn't necessarily a Matchbox, but again it was much like the um, much like this one. This is a full like a, a much bigger uh, scaled car. These were both you know kind of put them on the shelf kind of cars. They're big ones. That got zoomed around a whole lot more than they probably should have, but they're both, they still have them both. They're still still on, uh, you know, this Sterling. It's done up as close as I could to that car. So here you had, this was the Matchbox and kind of really, really personal connection from youth and dreams and weird things and from the neighborhood. Garage, and we're going to move down again to level four. Okay, now it gets even weirder. Let's 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 go down here and we'll we'll start with the one thing that's kind of out of place. This is another personal, you know, association kind of thing is that I have a good friend of mine who is an undertaker. Their cars are silver. A Jacob Davis Funeral Home Undertaker here. See you later, plate. That's a you know, belief in heaven. There you go. And this this is a you know they finally made this, I think, available for purchase. But you can, you can now. I can use this to spawn it in, so other people can get it and take them in. So yeah, that's yeah. If anybody wants one of these, and now of course we can we can sell them to each other. So if you're looking for a hearse, I can hook you up. The rest of this are all based on Transformers, basically. So this is, uh, I believe, like a Thrilling Thirties or some kind of Generations Bumblebee that isn't like a. It comes with a little trailer. We don't have the trailer, but this is. This has been up until La, La Carus came out, my main rally car. You know, the uh, the Issy Sport. Man, the handling on this is so good. I think I might even still prefer it to the La Carus. I'll have to see. I, I'm going to have to try and back to back those and see which ones I like more. Don't forget, I don't have the HSW La Carus. We've got a Vigero. That's another Bumblebee. These all say B on them, I think. B. B. Do you see a theme? Yep, there you go. Another Bumblebee. You know, we've got the, the Nightshade, which is... Real, you know, I find that the Nightshade is not just called the Vigero because it's they're both Camaros. This one, though, does not say B. This one says Goldbug. This is, of course, Bumblebee after he was rebuilt during the whole Return of Optimus Prime thing in G1. So we have a Goldbug in addition. So the one is... We don't have a B... Of this we went for the gold bug just to be different. Um, speaking of the throttle bots and you know the whole uh, you know gold bug thing, this is a, this should be yeah S light searchlight. I think searchlight wouldn't fit on here for whatever reason. So that's searchlight, which is another one of the throttle bots. Over here we have wind charger. Does that say wind charger on it? Yes, it does. Wind charger, a little interesting tidbit. The original G1 wind charger, of which this does, uh, you know, largely represent, was I think the first transformer I got back in the 80s. I think it was the red, uh, the red sports car minibot. 
Still have it. It's missing a missing a wheel, but I've gotten other ones that have wheels. Love that car. And this is also, ironically enough, the first car I ever stole off the street in GTA. This was my first car. So it's my first car and my first car. Um, I didn't do the wind charger paint job because they didn't tie the two things together until like probably a couple years ago. But now it's it's here and it's here to stay. Love this one. This is another, another green wood. But I built this one up like, I believe they call it Downshift. It's one of the R.I.D. cars. It's a beautiful muscle car. Should be wheel jack because it has the wheel jack head, but they call it downshift. You know, wheel jack was downshift in that because they made wheel jack a different character altogether. So it's really wheel jack, but they call it down. I don't know. It's wheel jack, but basically muscle car wheel jack or slash downshift if you wanted to get into that whole argument. Um, what did I did I put anything on here, or is it just a regular plate? Not downshift, so we put downshift on there because yeah, that was the way they call it out. This one. Should say Jackie. There you go. This is a true wheel jack homage here. And, uh, you know, I could probably put Jackie on that one, too, and delete downshift and then have an extra plate. That's a thought. Because these are both kind of a wheel jacky kind of thing. Tropos is maligned as being more boring than Anomis, even though it's faster. So, at least faster around roughy scores. So, take that for what you will, you know? Now this one, you kind of have to squint your eyes because it's not really big enough to be Trailbreaker. But the color is right and the paint scheme's right and it is a Japanese 4x4. I mean, it's, I think it's as good as we're going to get to get a Trailbreaker in here. And if not, if we can do better well, then we'll do better. But for right now, that was the theme I decided to do with my Karen Boer. And now we're back here. So we're, we're, we've gone through this part of the, uh, you know, the Transformers gallery as it were are we done no there's one more what could be on basement level five and dashing through the snow and a one horse open sleigh or one of these things so yeah here's kind of another holiday wing kind of thing we have the uh the christmas shotaro which, you know, I drive all year round anyway, but it's definitely... We, we've settled on it being the Christmas Shotaro. Uh, we've got a Christmas deity, I think. Yeah, got another... This is my other deity. This is fully done up in Monty Tech. Great for cruising around and very, very Christmassy. Good for Christmas racing and other kind of things. This is the Christmas Nero. All these things you've seen in my Christmas racing videos... The Christmas Nero, the Christmas uh, Baller ST, which we got with the special You've Been Naughty uh, livery here. You see all the, the wonderful things, cars and brass knuckles and guns and things you get for Christmas. Christmas Vacation, anybody? I would have liked it if I had been able to get a rusty version of this, but you can only get the custom ones clean. So you can't, you can't throw, even though the wheels sometimes look rusty. Depending, unless you put, you know, if you leave the originals on. But we, we did this one up as Cousin Eddie's Journey or, or Winnebago, whatever you want to call it. That's as close as I could get. And there's the barrage. The candy cane barrage with the, you know, the, the white walls and all that. Good, th good times, good times. Christmas Cleek got this free uh, when it was first came out with the Christmas bow. I got the other clique at the same time, I think. Really good handling car. Gotta keep that one, of course. We also have... This is the original Christmas Tampa. This came out. People don't forget. This came out at Christmas. This was one of the first, you know, cars released that is associated with Christmas. And so we did it up Christmas style. Drove that around with the, with the snow tires, with the off-road tires. And got out and threw snowballs at people. Good times. Good car. Good times. So I, I do have two Tampas. If I ever really want to, to get... I can, maybe I could get rid of the gold one. But this was the... Uh, this was the... Uh, what should I call it? The original Christmas one. So we're going to have to keep that. I, I don't plan on getting rid of the gold Tampa either. But a couple of Tampas. Now we're into more, you know, Valentine's Day. You know, this, you know... The Pegale here is just... The Lampadari Pegale. It was just so romantic. I think I thought I had ski racks on it at some point. Was it the louvers that gave you traction? Did you need the ski racks? Because then you could be going on a skiing vacation. 
but I might have taken them off because I don't ski. Um, this might have still have the. I think either yeah, there's yellow or pink lights on the bottom. But this was the car of love. If you wanted to go on a romantic date, uh, we left the license plate alone. This because it's got with a really cool Euro license plate, and that just looks good. And uh, this, did this one come out? Is this also a romance edition? This come out the um, the Broadway. This is not the Taxi Broadway. You see, you know, I, ha I think I have a Taxi Broadway, maybe on my other character. But this is just the red one of love. And there you have it, folks. That is... That is all of it. By the time you've seen this video, you will have seen all the characters that this character owns. I have another character. His name is Rusty Jack. There will be more cars to see. But most importantly, we've gone through everything and we can now officially verify I only have three parking spaces. And, and Rockstar, you have to do something. Next DLC has to be a new garage, an open garage space. Let us buy some garage space. You won't let me even... I can't even, you know, get a month, a single month of uh, GTA Plus loaded up with cars and then cancel. They say you can still have access to them. I don't know if you can still go in the building. You can still call them out or something like that. I don't know how that works. We're still waiting. There's going to be some videos as that comes out. This is I'm recording this in January, so there'll be more information on that as time goes on. But, Rockstar, I need parking. Or I just need to be satisfied with what I already own. And I think we can all agree that there should be nothing wrong with that. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, this is your, your thankful Black Knight. Thankful for all my wheels. Have a great night. Later, dudes. Let her rip, hang pen.